Welcome to the Better Business Photography Podcast, the show where we dive deep into relevant topics, engage in conversations with industry professionals, and equip you with the essential tools and information you need to build a successful and thriving photography business. I'm your host, Richard Johnston, and today I have the pleasure of sitting down with Gold Coast-based wedding photographer, Ryan Teague from Feather & Finch Photography. Ryan has 10 years of experience in the industry when it comes to wedding photography and running a successful business. Today, he joins us to share his wisdom and expertise surrounding how to stand out in a crowded marketplace. Let's get into the show. Thanks for joining us, Ryan. Pleasure, man. It's so weird hearing uh, a little intro about yourself while you sit here, to be honest. (laughs) Yeah, I can imagine. (laughs) I can imagine. (laughs) Um, now, before we dive into today's topic, um, if it's okay, would you be able to share, I guess, a little bit about yourself, um, like what it is you do and how sort of Feather and Finch came to be? Yeah, obviously. Um, yeah. Thanks for the intro. Um, based up on the Gold Coast, Queensland, um, been doing weddings for just under 10 years, I think, or almost 10 years now, kind of lose track once you hit that kind of five year mark, I think. You sort of, um, you sort of stop counting, don't you? <laughs> Oh man. Yeah. They kind of roll into one big wedding. Um, but yeah, got into weddings. Uh, my son's nearly nine. So it was kind of just, just after his birth, uh, born three months preemie, pretty, pretty wild ride for, for me and his mom, um, during that period, uh, and, and had no, uh, interest in photography prior to that. And then, uh, a friend of mine was into the, you know, he was just learning photography. And if I can go back to that time and kind of, my memory is not the best sometimes, but think back to it. I think uh, my friend kind of portrayed the importance of photography during that hard stage of my life. And um, because I, w- I was spending a lot of time in hospital, being so early, uh, being born so early, sorry, um, I just gravitated to to photography and just learning. It was kind of like my, my drug on the way out, you know, uh, escaping my mind of being present sometimes during those hard stages. And yeah, one thing led to another. I found my passion and uh, found my purpose, which was, you know, being a father, number one. Um, but also, you know, I know it's kind of cliche and, and the words get thrown around a lot now is like documenting life. But when I was, you know, I was in my early 20s and that was my thing. I was just like, holy shit, like I get this opportunity to document, um, you know, my son's life. Uh, that's that's pretty fragile right now. And um and that's where photography was born and then it eventuated into, Hey, this could become a business. And then, uh, you know, did the whole family thing and then started learning the business aspects of it. Uh, and then yeah, dived in pretty much full time nearly straight away. So you didn't necessarily go straight into weddings. You sort of sort of started with, I guess, photographing your family to begin with. Um, and then you kind of might've moved into photographing other families potentially. Yeah, pretty much started, started with families. Um, you know, doing the whole free shoots, $99 shoots and all that jazz. And, um, just to build my skill set, And then, um, had a friend of mine who was a wedding photographer who still is. And, and just kind of like, I had never been to a wedding. So like went along to weddings. Um, yeah. And, and then just like literally just as a lot of photographers, the same kind of that same kind of way to level up as, you know, offering services and, just kind of following those steps and then got into the weddings and, and had a pretty successful first year with weddings. Um, yeah. And then and like when I'm committed to saying that's it, you know, so jumped into a lot of learning and podcasts and YouTube and, uh, workshops and then just kind of like went, yo, like I'm, I'm in now, this is it. Yeah. Did you go when you're in your first year there, did you go straight into working for yourself or did you sort of start second shooting for someone? And then sort of, you know, start to learn the ropes that way before you, you sort of took the reins more and, and went head first into it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I second shot probably like two weddings for just like local Gold Coast photographers just for free. Yeah. Um, which I like obviously stoked that they let me because I do get a lot of emails on a on a weekly, you know, asking to come in and, and shoot and learn. Um, and that was it. Uh, but did nothing else other than those two, I think. And then just went hard on the family shoots hard on the engagement shoots and then just like i was always pretty solid at selling and and marketing so just from a previous background and personal training so then did a lot of like you know engagement photo shoots where and i was just you know knowing they were my lead source into a wedding and if they could get me 
an opportunity at their wedding, you know, it's, it's generating that income in the future basis. Yeah. Yeah. It's so, it's so crucial to know that, that, um, the, the client journey from, you know, what the journey is from the beginning to the end. And as you say, you know, starting with engagements at the start, if you can start marketing there and getting, getting the ball rolling there, that will eventually lead to the weddings. If they like, you know, the work that you take for the photos that you take for them, for those engagement shoots, then the, you stand a very high chance of getting booked for their wedding as well. It's pretty, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty wild to know that like someone's walking around with a ring that is explaining to us as photographers that they, they're a potential couple or potential, uh, work, you know, I think like builders, like no one's walking around with like a portfolio saying they want to go out and build a house. They've got to go find those people. And I think, mm. um, being, being engaged, I mean, it's a visible sign, you know, it's so, we're yeah. so gr- lucky to have that, um, and to be able to lead into the work from there as a stepping stone, I guess. Yeah, I totally agree. Now, I guess when it, when it comes to standing out in a crowded marketplace, I guess for me, there's, I guess, three things that I probably would focus on. And that would be like branding, having a strong portfolio and, and marketing that, you know, gets your work in front of um, people. Would you agree there, I guess, some of the main elements that you should probably focus on when trying to sort of stand out? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, for sure. Those are three pillars there. I mean, there's nuances and variants and ways you can go with all of those kind of headings, but yeah, there are three key, key ways to stand out for sure. If we were to dive into a couple of those, um, if you don't mind me asking in your, like in your opinion, like to begin with branding, um, what would you, what is branding and why do you think it's so important to, um, a business? Man, I think, uh, I mean, this is, this is probably going to be the wrong, uh, definition of branding, but just my, my first thought comes down to like, just your unique voice. I think, um, I just look back at my journey as a photographer and, uh, never saying that I've, I've hit the pinnacle, never saying, you know, that. I'm, I'm up here or anything like that. But just looking back at my journey, I just look at the branding and the voice I use. And it was, to be honest, like at the start, it wasn't true tone to myself. Um, you know, I, w- I was looking at a lot of the market and what was happening and and trying to figure out kind of how to become that. Uh, and yeah. it, it took a lot of time for me to just not give a shit, to be honest, and just go like, like fuck, I'm just going to be me now. Yeah, and and I think when we start out, the 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 fear that's driven around um you know maybe maybe your goals money and the fear that if you do do you you might not have masses you might not have that money income um so i think i mean going to branding if someone came to me and said hey ryan like i'm starting out how can i brand i'll just say look truly know yourself and if you don't speak to the others around you to explain who that who you are yeah. And use your voice across the board and do not look uh, too deep into wedding photography. Uh, look into people that have created personal brands that, it, that you know, not a like hoorah personal brands, like come follow me, I'm Insta Famous, more like a bit deeper than that. Um, and, I, and I think you'll find a line that you can stick to and that's going to be your true north and people will see beautiful transparency through the way everything kind of transpires through your business. Yeah. Do you think that's like when it comes down to your values as well, you you know, your values and your voice kind of converge there and that's what you need to communicate because your your values are what you stand for. So. Dude, hundred percent. Like, and I think I get it. Like if you're looking, you know, you, you want to, 50 weddings, 100 year weddings or whatever it is, you might be a little scared, you know, to showcase that voice. But there's, you know, if you look at the people that have been in the game uh, for a long time now or, or the kind of like bigger names, I guess when I was starting out, the Jonas Petersons, you know, Cy Moore, incredible photographer in New Zealand, um, you know, Kitchener's, you know, the Pharaohs, these guys like they, they are true to themselves and, and they stick to their own guns. You know, Ollie Sampson, like complete unique marketing style. But when you meet him, he's so unique that you're yeah. like, yo, like that, that only fits you. And um, I think it takes a very mature mindset to, to figure that out early on. Yeah, 100%. 
because you think like your your opinion is that that's that essentially that's branding to you is you know creating a authentic voice and showing your values do you think um when it comes to like you know logos website designs things like that do you think they play a part in that as well or do you think it's yeah yeah i think um yeah i mean it's all gonna come back to your voice right like i right now we're going through a bit of a transition to really broaden our uh the words that we use on our website or the way that we speak to couples so they understand our unique approach when photographing which has been you know classified as mindful spiritual connectedness mm. all that jazz and i 100 percent like i mean uh, Joel from Barefoot Embedded went through a huge transition in his company and good friend of mine. And he's like, you know, he's got the tats, he's got the big beard, he's got the motorcycles. And like, when you go to the website, you see that, right? The, yeah. the branding, I'm sure I haven't seen his logo for ages, but I'm sure there's elements of that kind of like heavier lifestyle. Um, so 100%, man, like colors, if, if depends who you are, if you're poppy and crazy and colorful go wild like yeah yeah make it pop and be you you know and I, th and I think the thing is you know what you what you put out is what you're going to attract to so you know you're, you're going to connect with the people as well that as you just said if they're poppy and vibrant then you're going to connect with those sorts of people as well if you're more dark and moody and into the tats and the grunge and that sort of a scene then you'll probably connect more with those sorts of people and I think at the end of the day, the, there's people for everyone and there's so many different types of people out there that, you know, staying authentic to yourself um, it can is fundamentally important because, you know, no matter what, you, you're going to find your ideal client out there that, or they'll find you. And if that, if you're staying to true, ra rather than trying to put on a persona of something you're not. Yep. Yep. Definitely. Yeah. Do not. Um, I mean, we got caught up in it early, you know, when we're trying to generate bookings and all this and we're just it's so easy you to know do. writing yeah dude and like i'll turn up to a wedding and i'm just like fuck like you know like i'm not suited to this and it and it's nothing to wrong with the couple um you know it, it was all the way that we portrayed ourselves online mm. and and the, the reality was that um we needed to be more authentic which is branding yeah um, now if, if someone's branding, like if they are being authentically themselves and they're speaking their voice, but for some reason it's not sort of cutting through, would you have any advice for them in that sort of a setting? Yeah, I think, um, I think one, one big thing, uh, again, never putting ourselves on a pedestal. So if you are listening, like, don't think, oh, this is just my own personal opinion, but I think a, a, a lot of things that truly do hold photographers back when they're starting out is their work. Like, um, I, I, I believe the, the price point people get to is faster than the work, uh, that should be essentially at that price point. Um, yep. so, so uh, again, it's going to come down to portfolio. I just, yeah, I just think, um, we don't look inwards enough at our own portfolio or mm. you've got an ego attached towards it and you don't reach out to, you know, mentors or coaches and say, look, dig deep, like rip me up. Like tell, I, I want to be at your level. Yeah. Tell me what I'm missing. And you'll find if they're fully open and transparent, they'll probably look at your work. If you're struggling, I mean, this is if you're struggling, if you want that constructive feedback, they'll probably look at your work and say like, holy shit, dude, start again. Like you need to understand light, you need to understand composition, connections, Get you know, all basics. of these nuances. Yeah, man, because I, I think, you know, you can have a website with beautiful imagery and a price at the bottom. And if that fucking imagery stands out like 1% of the world, like you're going to make bookings. It doesn't matter. Like you don't need to say shit mm -hmm. on that website. People are going to be attracted to that. You know, they're going to yep. fly your, those, the, the guys that are right up there, like the pharaohs and stuff like that. I mean, you can see why they are. Their work is is the 1%, you know? Yeah, well, I was taking a look at your work on your Instagram um, just before and you can you can quite easily tell that you've been doing it for a considerable amount of time, as you said, you know what I mean, for like 10 years just by looking at the quality of the work that you guys put out. So, yeah, 100%. I think we never uh, we never we never never feel like we're uh, we're there though, you know. Oh, but that that's that's all that's how we all feel inside, isn't it? There's always more to achieve, and you know, you always look at your own work with a critical eye. 
Um, and you, you know, you, we look to others and we always like, that's, you know, that they're killing it, but you never end up having that same sort of a look about like feeling about your own work. It's, it's, it's a funny thing. Mm. Um, and that kind of led me, you basically just led straight on to what I was going to ask you next. And that's, you know, is having a solid portfolio critical to standing out in a crowded marketplace? And you kind of just went there all of your own and basically answered that question. So, um, what tips would you have for a photographer who doesn't yet have a stock portfolio but is eager to build one? Would you um, suggest second shooting? Would you suggest um, – I know people do styled shoots. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of styled shoots. Um, but what, what would be your suggestions for someone who wants to build that kind of a portfolio? Mm. I mean – the overall writing line here, I think, is that the more time you have on that camera, the better, right? Like an artist with a paintbrush, the more time under the paint, you know, the more experience you're going to have. But, you know, second shooting, I think you want to, you want to, if, if, if it's about the art and it's about creating imagery that makes sense to you, you need to be in control. So yes, second shooting will talk to, you know, help you explain how wedding rolls and, you know, how to connect with people. If the photographer is good, you'll see how they interact. But it's not necessarily giving you the creative tools uh, to really, you know, build a portfolio under your own circumstances because everyone's vision of art is obviously different. I think the like we get asked, you know, maybe once a week, can we come second shoot? Um, and I normally respond no because, um, yeah, we just obviously can't facilitate that all the time and it's just you know winning for me i look at a wedding is not a great place to teach people um, 100 no, percent. so i I, th I think if i was starting out uh i would i would reach out to photographers who inspire me which i did early on back in the day gabe mcclintock was a huge inspiration to me um i reached out to him probably five six seven eight times over the course of about six months uh on instagram and just said, hey, dude, like I, did, I remember saying to him, I'm pretty sure I said, hey, man, I'll pay you whatever you whatever it is. I just want to have a Zoom call and I want to be able to create work like you. And it was again and again and again. And then he wasn't even offering mentoring back then. Uh, and I was his first one he had mentioned. Um, and, I, and I never said to him like, hey, here's my work. Like, tell me what I'm doing good. I just said like, dude, how do I create your stuff? So I think just being open and honest. And I always used to say like, I've had a lot of mentors in the creative realm and I'd always say to them, I don't want to hear anything good. Just tell me everything bad about my work and how to fix it. And yeah. I think, uh, I mean, I've got Constru a notebook. Con constructive, yeah, criti constructive criticism. Yeah, it goes a long way, doesn't it? And you've got to be able to take that on board as well. Um, do you know, you've got to be open to it if you want to grow um, mm. rather than get offended by it because someone's, you know, trying to give you a bit of feedback, but you take it like it, the wrong way. Mm. And I think the I think honestly the the one thing the actual practical thing that most people don't think about learning early is light, and, and Narav Patel, um, you know, I had a few conversations with Narav back in the day, and you know he said to me, you know, go hire an Airbnb, get two two friends or a model or pay for someone or whatever, have that Airbnb for a full day and night, go in there with one camera one lens and create. And do not have expectations. Do not look outside the actual place you're shooting in. Just create. And that's how Narav said, you know, he creates, you know, these beautiful editorial pieces. And then at weddings, that that one percent of the editorial piece, it might transfer over when he gets that opportunity in a similar setting. Um, it's been a major game changer for us as, you know, personal portfolio building outside of weddings. Yeah. I, th I think, yeah, lighting is, and for me as well, has always been something I always prioritise and that's, you know, getting nice light on the couples, on their faces, getting them lit well. Because then like ev even, you know, moving away from the portfolio when you work further down the line when it comes to editing and things like that, it makes your editing, like it's a, a breeze compared to if you're trying to edit a photo where the lighting's all wrong and, you know, there's shadows all over their faces and... It, it it just for me personally it can take a lot more time to edit and get through a wedding edit rather than you know if i've got nice lighting it's literally like preset a few adjustments and i'm moving on 
Mm, so hundred um, percent. Yeah, lighting lighting is definitely a big one, and then I think the other one is just being able to create those real authentic connections with your couples that can bring out those natural emotions um, are two of the you know the biggest things that you could probably learn in photography when it comes to building a portfolio that really resonates with others. If there's someone out there who potentially does weddings, families, you know, maternity things like that. Would you, when it comes to building their portfolio, would you suggest having them all together or would you suggest keeping them separate? Like, you know, whether you've got separate websites or you've got separate pages inside your website for that stuff rather than mixing it to, to help create a strong portfolio? Mm. Yeah, I mean, that uh, this is like, do you have pricing online or offline? Yeah, you know, it's, I guess it's that, a debatable that, question, that, isn't it? Yeah, very much. I think uh personally for me if i think you know thinking of yourself as a consumer can always help generate a better answer than thinking of yourself as a vendor or someone in the same business so i think myself as a consumer if i went to a photographer's portfolio that i love and i was getting married and i i don't know the first 10 posts were that i seen were family and and newborn stuff i probably wouldn't spend too much time digging deeper Mm. um if it was like one for one, one for one, one for one, um, I think it could attract me, but it probably wouldn't be as strong as obviously just going to a dedicated wedding photographer. But then on the flip as a father, I could also look at that person doing family stuff and be like, fuck, this is cool. Like we could do a family shoot rather than an engagement shoot yeah, and then have them do our wedding. Um, but I think consistency over style is, is is killer you know people want to go to your website and be like okay cool that's the creative art that they're creating not holy shit i'm not sure what i'm going to get it seems bright airy moody dark poppy which is fun which is cool but just for me as a consumer i'd want to see consistency yeah so you think overall so long as there's a a certain style to their images in general um you think that's enough to to cut through yeah and i think like if you're doing maternity family and weddings Fuck, it's a pretty big workload to create three websites, hold three Instagram accounts, three oh, Facebook tell me pages. About it. <laughs> I don't know. I'll do the individual, <laughs> I'd do, I'd okay. do the individual pages, yeah, 100%. If I was going to do yeah. it, I wouldn't have three websites. That's too much, too much work. Yeah, yeah. So just, you know, figure out where you want to go with it and just just hone in on that. Yeah. Now, when it, when it comes to marketing, um, what techniques would you recommend people sort of use, I know it's very general, very general and very open. Um, but when it comes to marketing, yeah, to sort of cut through the noise, what do you recommend people do? Oh, fuck. I mean, marketing's just a, uh, it's a big one. Um, Well, look, look look at it in terms of your personal business. Is there, you know, certain things like certain avenues that you focus on that you think, do you know what I mean? You, you get the majority of your bookings. Hmm. Mm. yeah i mean i mean i'll dig into marketing for you and talk about our personal experience with it i think one thing that i think whatever wherever you start focusing whether it's instagram facebook vendor relationships whatever like consistency is key you know i know it's like such a cliche but fuck it so is you know if you're obviously like for us it's like uh right now we're like we just chill on marketing like we're it's just word of mouth now almost yeah. um you know i feel like you know a lot of photographers focus very heavily on you know getting on vendor lists and and supplier lists which is great like don't get me wrong absolutely great mm. the one thing you, you got to understand is it, it is tangible depending on the you know coordinator on the day or if that coordinator leaves you might be off um i always i always try and hold whatever happens in the business up up to me essentially you know if it's if we're not making enough bookings um you know it's that's on me i can track why uh maybe i haven't been doing facebook marketing but uh if i was to focus on one thing because i know people want like practical things to take away um i would i would be focusing on the best way to offer value to uh any couples out there engaged so i think i see a lot of like I call it you're the hero in the picture marketing where like the photographer will like put up like i don't know they just they just position themselves with the hero hat 
and I think, um, you know, one thing we've done consistently for, I don't know, five, six years is nearly every day or every second day is an Insta story out, tips straight out, you know, and it's every day. Um, and they're the, they're the same tips, man, like just, but we're always like, if I write down a marketing plan or go, okay, cool, I've got a good idea. I'm like, is this offering value? to the a potential person listening to this. And if the answer is no, I fucking scrap it straight away. Uh, before that, it was not, nah, it was all about like, like let's get out how cool we are and how, what we do. And it's like, nah, man, it's not about us. Hey. Yeah. Where we, you want to position ourselves as the guide um, and them as the hero, you know, and as mm -hmm. you say, like offer the advice and the experience that we have to, and the value on how they can, you know, we can help them help better serve them. Um, you know, yeah as the guide rather than putting ourselves up as the hero because at the end of the day every, everyone looks at themselves as the hero in their own world mm. and when they start reading something on maybe someone's website where they're talking about themselves being the hero instantly there's like a disconnect yeah i think um i think always thinking about like the purple cow you know like if there was a purple cow painted in a paddock that's the only one you're going to notice out of a herd and I think, I mean, I think that's like Seth Godin or something, book, yeah. but um, what people are doing, try to do the opposite or do something a little different so it does stand out. You know, I know TikTok's huge, all that jazz. For us, like we jumped on it and went a little bit on it and then we just like backtrack and it's like, dude, what are we doing? Hey, like this is, this this is, the, we're, we're trying to generate uh, f not even followers, but we're just trying to generate more people around us. And it's like, so not us like just yeah we, we don't need to go down that path let's just be authentic to who we are which yeah i mean we all just ride those waves so marketing is just a test go out and test what you think's right and uh yeah, and see, yeah. What, see what you generate yeah yeah and pivot from there for me personally um i like to i guess i like to try and focus on long form marketing you know marketing that's going to um keep coming back Back. Like, do you know what I mean? You put the work in now and you still get the rewards down the track of the work that you put in initially. Whereas I find that with social media and TikTok and those platforms, it's very much churn and burn. Um, and you've got to keep doing the work and keep working to keep generating those leads mm. where I think more effective marketing is, yeah, focusing on, you know, your relationships with your vendors, um, maybe looking at SEO, things like that, which once you do the work, it might just need a little bit of fine tuning. And, you know, once you're ranking, you, it'll, it'll keep sending those leads to you and you've just got to update it every so often to, you know, s stay relevant. Um, that's where I like to sort of prioritize my marketing, um, rather than, yeah, yeah, I'm not big on the social medias and things like that where, it's just because I just feel like you, you're just doing it all the time and it's, mm. it's never ending. And it's, I think that's how you can end up burning out sometimes if, if you don't put those right pieces in place. Mm, 100%. I mean, we are the Parsons who are incredible photographers in the States. I remember when I was starting out, it was pretty hard in the socials and they had a, a whole gap year off social media. Uh, pretty sure the website was down as well. Uh, maybe the website was live, but they are, uh, I don't know them personally, but, um, yeah, they took a year off social media. Uh, pretty sure they documented it and, and now they're live back on socials and stuff like that. But really cool people to um, follow and, and check out creating authentic work for themselves and um, yeah, have a little family and, and definitely don't feed the beast of social media. Yeah. So what was the outcome with them? Do you know? Did, they, did, did things drop off? Did they like... Oh, I mean, this is years ago, man. Hey, um, okay. I don't know personally. From memory, I'm pretty sure work did slow down, which they were uh, expecting. Uh, but I, I, I think uh, they weren't they weren't as shocked as they thought they would have been. Uh, yeah, I don't think it, I don't think the it was a dramatic on it. pause. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Okay. Nice. I guess this next question is sort of in relation to that as well. It's like, you know, for someone who may be time poor and doesn't have a lot of spare time to give to marketing, what would you sort of suggest they focus on? Uh, and that's probably comes back to more, you know, that, that long form marketing rather than the short form mm. would, would be my yeah. best guess. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. Do, do the stuff that adds the most value, write it down on a piece of paper and just write all these ideas, social media, blogs, 
PDFs, eBooks, I don't know, video tutorials, whatever that could be. And just be like, where's the most value lie? Uh, mm. And then just, you don't have to get it all done in a day. Like just life's not about, you know, I don't know. For, for me, life's not about working like full hard in the office. You know, maybe two hours yeah. a day would be sweet. Um, but it depends what you want, I guess. Yeah, I think every so often you've got to just stop and pause and take a look at how, mu how much you've actually accomplished over a period of time, even if it is mm -hmm. just two hours a day because it, it really does add up even though it might feel mm -hmm. like you're not getting a great deal done. Mm, definitely. Um, in your opinion, uh, what is the best way to build relationships with coworkers and vendors if that's the kind of avenue people want to go down? Is there certain things you should be doing, um, you know, to help foster those relationships? Do you have any, do you have any tips? Oh, vendor relationships. Uh, I mean, it's all coming back to being authentic. I won't just reiterate that anymore, but that word comes to my mind straight away because we definitely get the emails, um, you know, people wanting to foster a relationship with us, which we're very grateful for. But you can almost see through, uh, you know, a chat GBT email or something like that coming out to yep. us. Um, and and I think, uh, yeah, like if, if you want to be, I mean, authentic doesn't obviously just bring in a relationship. Obviously, it allows comfortability for both parties. But if you're like, okay, cool, I really want a relationship with this photographer or I really want to maybe get on their vendor list, maybe they've got one. What can I do? Again, value. Like I, I was, I'm still, uh, I mean, we offer videography here, but back in the day, I still couldn't believe that, you know, we'd been operating for maybe six years and um, not once I had a videographer come to us and say, you know, um, like we would love to do a promo video on your company. We would love to document your life, your family, a day at the wedding uh, to offer you, you know, all these different formats where you could utilize for marketing and you could showcase the services you provide without requesting something back. But if yeah. that had happened to me back in the day, I would have been like, yo, dude, like open your books because I'm going to push everyone your way because you've helped me so much. Yeah. Um, and, and I still think that's very rare, you know, uh, as a photographer, you know, if you are a photographer listening, because I'm sure there are plenty, um, don't just think you work up the ladder, you know, meaning like, oh, venues, everything, because it goes venue, then photographer bookings. Like, I would rather work down the ladder, like start with a florist and um, see, mm. see what you can provide for them. It doesn't yep. have to be photography. Like you might be able to do a, a uh, constructive feedback over their website or you might be able to help yep. them with cur curating their social posts. Um, yeah, anyway, just offer value and be authentic. Yeah, and I think it's important when you're doing that as well um, that you're not coming to them and saying, what can I do for you to help? Rather already have a plan of what you can do and then present yeah. that to them so that they don't have to think and then they can just say, yep, that sounds awesome. Let's do it. Mm. And I don't think, I mean, there's no right way to go, but I just remember back to the emails that we get and it's like, people be like, yo, if you recommend us, we'll give you X amount of dollars. Or, and it's like, it's not about that, you know, like, nah. um, you know, for, for us anyway, that that's a massive red flag. Uh, yep. Yeah. There's no, absolutely no way I'd build a, a relationship over, you know, monetary, money is yeah. the leading cause. Yeah, that's right. Nice. Um, do you think uh, photographers should be using, utilizing ads um, and some portion of that as well to help um, get their work in front of people, whether that's Google ads, Facebook ads, TikTok ads, because that's just another form of more paid marketing rather than organic. But I mean, I don't think you need to. Uh, I think if your work's super solid uh, and people can see it, like if, if you are like the legit, like you're making some pretty epic work, like people are going to notice and share it. And if it might, it might be photographers, um, you know, I, I remember reading a book and, and this is, I mean, we've done paid advertising and all that jazz. We don't go heavy on it. We might boost the post because Instagram is just a killer. So we might do that every now and then. But I remember reading a, a, a book and the guy said, um, a company that markets, uh, a company that always does paid advertising is a failing company. And, and the concept of that was uh, if you need to pay for marketing and getting in front of your clients, that means you don't have enough clients. Uh, this is more of a consumer looking at it. And so I'm like, 
if I write, I don't know, Gold Coast wedding photographer and I see sponsored ad, sponsored ad, sponsored ad, sponsored ad, I'm like, you guys obviously don't have enough work. Um, so you skip them and you go down to the- Yeah, so the I skip real. them. I mean, I'm a, yeah, I mean, I'm, I am a photographer, so it's kind of like a bit of a cheap move. But, um, you know, I, the other day we were looking for, um, what was it? Uh, a, a gutter replacement, like a house guttering. Yeah. And I went on the Gold Coast gutter replacement and it was like, add, 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 add top one and i was like done didn't click any of the ads because i'm like you guys are hustling to get more work hopefully that top one doesn't need to advertise i'm not saying yeah. that it's wrong i'm not saying they don't do it but i'm not i'm saying that it's not like the bn end all and a lot of people do it and if you want to stand out it's probably not the market to stand out where everyone else is doing the same shit yeah i mean dry long's solid on that right like dry long like hats off to dry like um you know, he's so solid on on unique ways to stand out from the crowd. Mm. So I'm sure people know who he is, but follow his shit. Even the way he creates like his <laughs> subjects on his emails, it gets you and you're like, you know, it might be like, oh, yeah, I've got something to tell you. And you're just like, what? And then you're like, oh, no, nah, fuck, it's not even to me. Um, nah. So, yeah, so just unique ways to stand out. Awesome. Sounds good. So I guess sort of wrapping wrapping it up, um, do you have any, any other advice or anything else you would like to share with people when it comes to, you know, um, st standing out in, in a crowded marketplace? Just be unique. Yeah. Be different. Be the purple cow. Uh, and just make sure you work solid. Just make sure you work solid. And, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of wedding photographers around. It's a pretty easy barrier to entry into the, to the market. Um, but uh, yeah, I think just, um, yeah, and, and, and generating a business that you're proud to be in, um, that gives you the opportunity to live the life that you want. I think that's, that's something I, you know, it took a while for me to learn, but now I get to surf all day, you know, uh, not saying it's whatever success is to anyone else. That's cool. But for, for me, success is uh, being free of being stuck to a business, I guess, to generate income all the time. Yeah, I think that definitely becomes, of, of course, a lot more important as well when you start to get a family because you really do value that time um, with them. Um, but yeah, it is it is quite important to build the business around you rather than you around your business. Definitely, yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway, thank you very much for um, joining us on the show this morning, Ryan. If people wanted to check out um, your work, uh, learn a little bit more about what it is that you do um, or I believe you might have some education courses as well or some workshops that you offer. Where would people go to check them out? Yeah, I mean, you can jump on anything Feather and Finch Photography. Uh, you'll find all the all the links out to all that jazz. Um, in terms of education, I used to run a podcast called Escaping the Ordinary Podcast, but I think the last episode was about a year or two ago. So uh, you might go through there and find a guest that you like to hear, uh, but I, yeah, it's not active anymore. Uh, same as my mentoring, which was ryanteague.co. I don't think that's active anymore. Um, but yeah, Feather and Finch Photography, and if you just send us a DM, we'll get back to you. Sounds good. Well, thank you very much for um, taking some time this morning and jumping on with us and having a little bit of a chat. It's, it's much appreciated. Oh, my pleasure, bro. We'll put all your details in the show notes um, for anyone else that wants to learn more um, about Feather and Finch photography um, or make an inquiry with you guys. Um, but yeah, other than that, we'll, we'll see you in the next episode. Legend. Thank you, man.